Hello and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. This is the TAFA and chart analysis for February 2nd. Today has been a down day. Um, we started off today actually okay, but unfortunately sometime like maybe a little bit after the market opened, we really started dropping. And that is mostly because PayPal revenue went down a lot. And then after hours, we started dropping again because Facebook revenues dropped. You can see like this is the after hours dip and this is the basically, this is uh, where we actually dipped um, when the earnings for uh, PayPal came out. Now, why did these, Companies affect earnings. Well, people are really looking at Wall Street companies to look at how crypto is actually going to do. Remember, crypto is still considered a risk asset, like we've said, not really a hedge against inflation. So right now, it's just going to follow the market and especially follows those in the NASDAQ and the tech sector. So despite the fact that, you know, before it was doing OK, uh, afterwards, when PayPal actually like uh, the earnings for PayPal sucked, it dipped and the earnings for Facebook sucked, it dipped again. We were slowly recovering from the PayPal thing, but then Facebook hit and we dipped again. So even though we actually ended yesterday on a very, very positive note uh, because of Google earnings, it really, really got dampened. You can see like, you know, with uh, the other earnings, uh, you can see with the earnings for, you know, like other companies, Google and Microsoft and everything doing very well here, but uh, with bad earnings, we dipped again. Now, the Dow Jones Industrial a industrial Average actually went up about 200 points. But I think after hours trading, it could actually not, it could be pretty uh, down, honestly. It's down, I think, 34. Yeah, it's down 34 right now after hours, and it might continue to go down more. Now, Amazon earnings are coming out soon, and those are going to be good. But will they beat street expectations? Because I think everyone expects Amazon to be really good. We don't really know, and we can only really guess. Um, if I had to guess tomorrow morning, I would say we would probably open negative. We might bounce back positive. Uh, afterwards, but if I had to guess, I would say we would open negative because uh, Facebook's earnings were after the bell and they closed. But just like yesterday, Google's earnings were after the bell. I thought it, we would open positive, but shortly after we dipped negative. So I can definitely be very, very wrong about these things because any kind of like new, um, any kind of like new earnings reports or any kind of like uh, news that could be a little bit bearish could definitely affect. Um, the way that markets go. But overall, definitely kind of following the tech sector and every single uh, every single like earnings report is actually affecting this. You can, like I said, you can see like Google's earnings reports, this comes up, PayPal's and then Facebook's. So very, very volatile. A lot of earnings reports for Q4 are coming in and people are really, really looking at that. If you look at the one month, this dip isn't so bad. And like overall, we've gone a little higher since the dip on the 22nd. As you can see, like, here, like I did yesterday, you can see here, we've gone a little higher, but the tops really haven't gotten much higher. Yes, they're slightly higher, but they still haven't broken an area where I feel comfortable with. They have failed to break 40,000 a couple of times now. We've gotten up to 39, and they definitely haven't come close to 30, uh, 43 or 44,000, which is what I'm really looking for. Unfortunately, this area in here is looking like this area in here, and if the stock market collapses again, like it did a couple of weeks ago, um, I do believe that uh, I, I do actually believe that we could actually have another collapse down to the $30,000 area if stocks take another major tumble. I don't know if there's really the stock market will take another major tumble, though, because the earnings reports for much of the tech sector and other sectors have actually been pretty good for the holiday season. Remember, like when the stock market was about 1,000, 1,500 points uh, higher when we were actually at this plateau. So I hope stocks can actually go up to their year end highs for 2021 and crypto will follow up as well. But crypto is having a much, much uh, harder time. It's being basically bogged back down by every bad earnings report from the tech sector. And it's specifically like technology stocks like Microsoft, Google, Apple, uh, PayPal, Facebook, that's really moving the, and even Netflix, that's really, really moving um, the crypto price right now. So it's very volatile because of that. There's not really any new regulation news if you really look at it. Um, yes, Biden has the executive order, but all he's going to say in that executive order is like, hey, you SEC guys, get your crap together and get like a framework going. And India, yes, they've taxed crypto by 30%, but 
they actually have allowed crypto. So the India ban's no longer on the table. They're just going to tax cryptocurrency and they're even going to make their own CBDC, it looks like. So that's actually fairly positive news from India, in my opinion. So, I mean, like I said, if you look at it right now, ever since we like dipped back, uh, this is the one month graph, ever, ever since we dipped on this plateau, we have been going slightly up, but the tops have just not reached where I am. So there is still a risk for another cascade down to about the $30,000 area is my opinion. So I would definitely I would definitely hold buying off until at least we dip to the $30,000 area or we actually rise maybe to around the 43 44,000. That's the first inclination I would have buying. You can try to play on these dailies like oh, you know um you can try to play play on these dailies like you know oh facebook went down it's probably going to open negative tomorrow and while those have been right like 70 80 percent of the time they're still not guarantees like yesterday we left off with alphabet and that was very much positive but today when we started we actually dipped down like two or three thousand so trying to leverage trying to trade on that news i think is folly and you have to be very very risk oriented to actually do that and i definitely wouldn't do that i would just hold on right now and maybe if it reaches 30,000 or if it breaks above 43,000, I would actually start to buy in at this point. Unless you're DCAing in, then you just keep DCAing in, and that's perfect, and that's perfectly fine. On the technical side, on the daily, like the EMA and the SMA for the 10 days, honestly, uh, basically is, is a moving target. It's been uh, buy and sell, changing constantly from day to day. Right now it is sell, but that's just because we actually moved down a couple thousand points today. If we happen to get a good Amazon report and it boosts uh, prices up, this will actually be buy again tomorrow. So I actually see the very short term as kind of neutral and very chaotic. And it would be like pretty good for day traders trying to make a profit as long as you like, you know, buy in the 35, 36 thousands and then sell around uh, 38, 39 thousand. There could be some profits there. I don't really play that kind of short term trade though. So I am just DCAing or holding. Once again, like the move. Like if you're looking for price markers, I think 30, around 30,000 and around 44,000 would be the buy uh, markers for me. Um, in terms of the oscillators, the oscillators for the daily are neutral. The average directional index is the same as yesterday, but the commodity channel index, the stochastic and the RSI are all neutral. So there's nothing uh, saying buy or sell there. And, and realistically, like, on the really short term, it can easily go coin flip either way right now. I still do see like as the stock market starts to recover, crypto will eventually go up, but how long it'll go up and how much it'll go up is definitely up for grabs, but it's really not something to bank on right now. On the weekly, um, the oscillators are still pretty neutral. The commodity channel index and the stochastics say they're oversold, uh, but the MACD level is still on a sell. Momentum is buy, so it's slightly more buy, but it's still mostly neutral. And of course, the moving averages are all sell right now, all the way down to the 50, which is the one year. So like, because Bitcoin is essentially, Bitcoin and crypto is basically being moved by every single profit report from the tech sector, it's very hard to gauge. I think overall, the tech sector is actually going to be up. But you know, there's certain companies that you just really don't know too much about. I think Amazon earnings might actually boost it because it's going to be pretty high. But you know, like, people expect really high earnings from Amazon, so it may not actually beat street expectations. Like there's like a, I guess I have market expectation, but then there's the re real street expectation, and I'm not really sure if it'll actually be able to beat that. I still think the Amazon reports are going to be positive though, but the moving average for the weekly is definitely still on a sell trajectory uh, because we still need to gain like that 43, 44,000 area before that starts uh, coming around. And that, I think the earliest that can happen is probably late February, maybe early March, and we might not actually get that bullish market until like early in the summer. Because remember, inflation worries are still pairing stuff. Um, inflation worries are still like pairing the market down, essentially. And that inflation stuff isn't really going to go away anytime soon. It'll take several months for that to start to subside. On the one monthly, the oscillators are still uh, are pretty neutral. Um, and also like everything else including the EMA for the 20 is actually down. So if you're looking at that, everything up to almost two years is actually down. We're definitely down year over year. And like I said, I do see it turning this summer, but maybe not like until early summer slash late spring. Because right now, overall, people are actually worried about inflation. They're worried about interest rate hikes. So 
the potential for Bitcoin to rise is definitely there, but I think it's going to be hard for it to get above like 45 or 50,000. So right now, once again, like I wouldn't really buy until it gets into the mid 40,000s or it dips down to 30,000 because like I think at 30,000, you've basically reached a bottom. And I think like buying then is really, uh, I think buying then is essentially like um, a good thing to do because I don't think it'll dip any further. And at 44,000, 45,000, you can get like at least somewhat of a confirmation that the market's switching to bullish. So those are the two points uh, that I'm actually looking at above and um, below us if you're trying to time. I don't really advocate trying to time the market. I would just advocate DCAing in or, or like, you know, buying and holding until you reach a specific price point on a product that you actually believe. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe and hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.